Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about the law of cosines. We use the law of cosines when we are solving oblique triangles, which means we have an acute triangle or an obtuse triangle. We've already used the law of sines to solve angle side angle, side angle angle, and side side angle triangles. We're going to use the law of cosines when we have side angle side or side side side. For a triangle with sides A, B, and C, and opposite angles, capital A, capital B, and capital C respectively, we have three equations. We have C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB times the cosine of C. We have B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. And we have A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. For our first example, using the law of cosines to solve a side angle side triangle, we have side A equals 9, side B equals 7, and angle C equals 50 degrees. Because we know our angle C, we want to use the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. Let's plug in what we know. We don't know C squared. We know A is equal to 9, and we'll square it. B is equal to 7, and we'll square it. We're going to subtract 2 times 9 times 7 times the cosine of 50 degrees. We can put all of this in our calculator. As you do that, make sure you double check your mode to make sure it's in degrees. When I put in 9 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 9 times 7 cosine of 50, I got that C squared is 49.01. I'm going to take the square root, which says that C is 7. I'll put that 7 on my triangle. I notice that B is also 7. This says I have an isosceles triangle. When I look at the angle 50, having an opposite side of 7, and having another side of 7, it tells me that B must also be 50 degrees. That says A will be 180 minus 50 minus 50, which is 80 degrees. Now I have all three sides and all three angles of my triangle. In this example, we'll solve a triangle where side A is equal to 2, side B is equal to 4, and angle C is equal to 45 degrees. We'll once again use the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C. That means I have C squared equals 2 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 2 times 4 times the cosine of 45 degrees. Putting all of that in my calculator, I have that c squared is about 8.68. I'm not writing all the decimals on my slide, but I'm keeping them in my calculator so that when I hit the square root, I have the most accurate answer. This tells me that c is 2.9 Four, seven. You should watch for instructions in your homework or other assignments that tells you how many decimal places you should use when giving your answers. At this point, I know all three sides of my triangle, but I only know one of the angles. I need to find the remaining two. We have two choices for how we can find one of the angles. We could continue to use the law of cosines, or we could bring back the law of sines. I'll use the law of sines because I think it's a little bit easier. So to use the law of sines, I need to take an angle I know and a corresponding side. We'll say the sine of 45 over 2.947 is equal to, now I look for one of the angles I'd like to know, so let's use A. I say the sine of A over the corresponding side of 2. We know we have to cross multiply. I have 2 sine of 45 equals 2.947 times the sine of A, and I want to isolate A. The first step in doing that is to divide by 2.947. We have 2 sine of 45 over 2.947. This gives us the sine of A. To get the value of A, I'll do the sine inverse of 2 sine 45 over 2.947. This says A is 28.68 degrees. To find the remaining side of B, I'll take 180 minus 45 minus 28.68, which gives me 
0.32 degrees. Our next example uses the law of cosines to solve a side-side-side triangle. In this triangle, we have side A is 5, side B is 4, and side C is 7. To mix things up, I'm going to use the formula a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. In this case, we're using the law of cosines to find our angle a. We'll start again by plugging in the values we already know. We have 5 squared equals 4 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 4 times 7 times the cosine of a. 5 squared is 25. I'm going to add together 4 squared plus 7 squared, which is 65. Then I have minus 2 times 4 times 7 is 56 cosine of a. I'll move the 65 over to the left. So now I have 25 minus 65 is negative 40 equals negative 56 cosine of a. I'll divide both sides by negative 56. I have negative 40 over negative 56 equals the cosine of a. A negative over a negative is a positive. We can reduce 40 over 56 to 5 over 7, and we say this is the cosine of a. To get the angle a, I'll take cosine inverse of 5 over 7. This will give me a. So in my calculator, I hit cosine inverse, 5 divided by 7. It says a is about 44.42. Now that we have the measure of angle A, we need to find the measure of angle B or angle C. To give us a little bit more practice with the law of cosines, I'm going to use B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B to find the value of angle B. My equation is 4 squared equals 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5 times 7 times the cosine of B. 4 squared is 16. I'm going to add 5 squared plus 7 squared, which is 74, minus 2 times 5 times 7 is 70, cosine of b. I'll move the 74 to the left. 16 minus 74 is negative 58. That's equal to negative 70, cosine of b. I'll divide both sides by negative 70. Negative 58 over negative 70 is equal to the cosine of b. Like last time, the negative over a negative is a positive. 58 over 70 could be reduced to 29 over 35, which is my cosine of b. Now we're ready to take the cosine inverse of 29 over 35. This gives us 34.05 degrees. Now that we know the value of b, we can find the value of c by taking 180 and subtracting 34.05 minus 44.42. This says C is 101.53 degrees. In the next video, we will apply the law of cosines to word problems.